On this episode of Ghost Hunters International, GHI is called in to help at a renowned fort in Canada whose staff is tormented by tragic deaths and phantom sightings. Sometimes we do see a man looking out the window. What the hell just moved? Is the spirit of a blacksmith still at work? She had a- or a deceased guard unable to let go of his duties. What, what the, the hell was that? that? Later, GHI enters the gates of hell, where an air tram traverses a land of forgotten bloodshed and hardship. It's estimated that approximately three Chinese men died for every mile of track laid down. Cigarettes moved. No way. And they reach men worked to death on a railway. I thought I just saw something moved. The hell was that? What eerie evidence did the team uncover? What? You're kidding. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Team, welcome to uh, Winnipeg here in Manitoba in Canada. Uh, we have a great case coming up, and Susie's going to give us that download. Well, guys, we're going to be heading over to investigate Lower Fort Gary in Manitoba. This fort was mainly used to protect the fur trade, and there have been some mysterious deaths that have happened at Lower Fort Gary. Our client is a government organization called Parks Canada, and they want to know if the paranormal activity they are experiencing is related to these deaths and why it is that it's starting to increase in the recent weeks. So what type of paranormal activity are we dealing with here? Several apparitions have been seen throughout the fort, one of which is a little girl that's been seen in the guest cottage. There has been a figure of a man and a woman seen in the former prison where one of the guards killed himself. There have also been reports uh, coming from the blacksmith shop where people can hear the sound of hammering on an anvil and nobody's inside the shop. Well, with a recent increase in activity, this should make for an interesting case. Uh, Folks, um, that looks like the fortress coming up on the right. Carolyn. Hello, bonjour. Welcome to Lower Fort Gary. Parks Canada has called in GHI to investigate a number of paranormal claims that we've had here. We have a number of visitors that come through the site as well as staff that work here year round and we are a little concerned for their safety and we'd like to know exactly what's going on and why these sightings have increased in the last few months. What was this fortress used for? This fort was built mainly for fur trading. What's really interesting about Lower Fort Gary is it wasn't just a fur trading post. Throughout the years, it's been used as Manitoba's first penitentiary, first insane asylum, and then as a training grounds for our national police. There have been some deaths here on site, and we've had a number of paranormal occurrences that have been happening here. So what what are the claims of activity in the fortress? Well, we've had a number of sightings in uh, the Furloft, which is the building across from us there. We used to have security guards that roamed the site, Mm -hmm. and in one occurrence, he actually heard someone upstairs, and when he went up to investigate, he saw a person in historic costume. Him figuring it was a staff member that had gotten locked in the building asked the man to leave, but when he went to escort the man down the stairs, the man actually turned around and walked out the wall. So, Carolyn, um, Susan had indicated to us that in the blacksmith's shop, there have been sounds like metal being hit on top of an anvil. Now, we're led to believe that there was an explosion that killed someone? Yes, yes. The story goes that they were storing ammunition there. The good blacksmith brought his son in to teach him how to blacksmith, and we figure his son must have been blacksmithing, hit the nail of the steel, caused a spark, caused an explosion, and both of them did perish inside Ah. there. We've also had a number of different sources of activity in the warehouse. It's been used as an insane asylum and then a penitentiary. So the one big story from there is Thomas Slack. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was a jailkeeper when the prison was here. And he worked there until he went insane. And uh, he killed himself. Huh. The sightings that we've seen in there actually have been from both inside and outside. Sometimes we do see a man looking out the window. 
one night, myself and another girl were walking past the warehouse building. The first window on the third floor, I saw a man's uh, shadow looking out the window at us. And he moved. And I didn't say anything at all because I thought just that, that my mind was playing tricks on me. And then the next morning, I heard my girlfriend telling somebody that she had seen a man in the window looking at us. So then we were both completely freaked out. So we'll head out to the guest cottage. It's just outside the walls here. Mm -hmm. This was actually used as a sick house for children with tuberculosis. The children were sent here when they were diagnosed so that they wouldn't infect the rest of their family. And many of them died while in the house here. When this was being restored, the restoration crew was in here setting up and they left it one evening almost ready to go. But when one of the gentlemen came back the next day, he found the house in shambles. Things were strewn about, there was things broken, and he actually heard a small girl crying. In the rocking chair that we have behind you here, the small girl was sitting there crying. And the man was very upset, so he went to go get his coworkers, and when he came back, the girl was gone. Okay, Carolyn, we'll get started. Okay. And we'll see you in a few days with some answers. All right. There's a lot of claims of activity here. Some of the things that I noticed about the surroundings, one is that we're right by a river, running water. Also, the fact that this fort is built out of limestone. These are two things that tend to generate paranormal activity. The big thing tonight is definitely try to stick to what we do know about the history. Use that for our EVP questions and try to find not only answers that Carolyn's looking for, but hopefully be able to let her know at the end that whatever visitors come in here, they are safe. Hey everyone. Hey. How's it going? How's everything going with the setup? We're ready to go. Okay, great. We have our client wanting to know who is here. We still have to figure out if there is something here to begin with before we can actually give an identity to it. So I think for all of us, stay rational. Hopefully something will come out of this that we can bring to her that's solid evidence of either paranormal or not, and we're not just adding to the stories. Well, with that said and done, let's grab our stuff and get those lights out. Salt, whiskey. Barry and I headed over to the warehouse and the big claim here is seeing what looks like a male's face in the window. They connect this face to Thomas Slack who committed suicide in the warehouse. One of the things we did want to check was the second floor because it was in a scene asylum. Okay, so these bottom sections were cells. You see the bars in the windows, didn't I, on that side? Mm -hmm. You know, and seeing asylums back in the day were pretty scary because it really didn't take much to be put in them. I think the treatments back then were a lot, they were, they were very misunderstood as well, like lobotomies and stuff yeah. like that. It was horrendously terrible. Up here's the shock therapy. What is the one when they dump you into the cold water, like ice water? Different times, different treatments. Is there anyone here? Were any of the treatments we were talking about done to you? What was that? Did you hear that? I'm not really sure if that was like a settling sound or that was the boat again. Were any of you treated unjustly here? And perchance maybe we could have your name. What is your name? If you don't think you belong here, you gotta let us know. Or else we'll leave. Oh. Okay, what the hell just moved? If you don't think you belong here, you gotta let us know. Or else we'll leave. Oh. Okay. What the hell just moved? Sounded like one of those boats. Chris and I were investigating in the warehouse, and that's whenever it sounded like the boat at the far end of the room moved. That freaked me out a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a 
dessert. One steak. Oh, it's quite heavy, too. Well, it seems perfectly fine. The boat is very, very heavy. So f for it to shift on its own, it would take quite a bit. If you do want us to stay, we need you to make a noise for us. A distinctive noise. Something which stands out. What was that up here? Want to check down here, Chris? Yep. We got these two loud bangs or knocks. We couldn't figure out if it was on the second floor with us or if it was on the first. Can I try for it again, Bear? I'm gonna sit here and watch. Okay, if that was you that made those two knocks, we thank you. Barry continued the EVP session and I just sat on the staircase watching. Everything seemed to quiet down after that. I'm not really sure what to make of it. Okay. We'll leave you a piece. Well, we've got it. We should have it on the, the recording. Okay, the audio session. Paul and Susan were in the blacksmith shop. Uh, the reports here are that people are hearing what sound like the anvil and a hammer. This mm -hmm. is where that tragic accident happened, right? The... Where the blacksmith was trying to teach his son the trade. Mm -hmm. And a spark from this caused the shop to explode. Who is haunting this location? Now there's the possibility here of either it being the blacksmith or his apprentice son. That's the bellows. Yeah, pull that. And we decided that uh, it might be a good opportunity here to actually light the furnace, uh, use the bellows, um, heat up some metal, doing what a blacksmith would do. If you're the blacksmith, maybe you can tell me if I'm doing something wrong here. As a blacksmith, this was your trade. This was your skill. And you blew up your shop. Maybe you could give us a sign. What was that? Oh, I heard that too. I thought it sounded like something dragging almost. Yeah. During the investigation, I heard what sounded like a dragging sound coming from the area where uh, something... Suze? You didn't hear that? What? That... And then I reacted to it. Something was moving over there behind your camera. Oh, that's nothing. Sound like a dragon sound again, huh? Yeah. Same dragon sound I heard inside. I mean, weren't the bellows fine? I could, it's, that's actually exactly what it sounded like. You heard that? Yeah. But it was much louder. Well, if that's the case, I had the, the camera is rolling. Susan identified that the sound that the bellows was making was actually the sound that she heard whilst we were outside. I'm hoping the audio recorder actually picked that up. Okay, this is the warehouse. Wow. This is where uh, uh, they've seen from outside at nighttime uh, Miss Thomas Slot's face in the window. Oh. And up upstairs is where uh, supposedly he killed himself. And this is the attic where it happened. If there's anyone here with us, 
Whoa. That's creepy. <laughs> We'd like to speak to anybody that still resides here. Mr. Slack, don't be afraid of us. Can you give us a sign that you're here, Mr. Slack? Can you make a loud noise? What, what the hell, the hell, was, hell that? was that? Mr. Slack, don't be afraid of us. What, what the, hell, the hell, was hell was that? Something moves over here. Big time. Sky and I were investigating the warehouse at Lower Fort Gary, uh, specifically the uh, room where Thomas Slack had uh, killed himself. At one point during the uh, EVP session, we heard this loud scraping sound. That's weird. That is weird. Joe, try to move a couple things around. Let me see if I hear that again. We tried to look for the source of the noise. That's exactly what it sounded like. I know. But what the hell moved that? There's nothing over here. And this was very solid when we got here. It still is. It sounded exactly like the noise we had heard inside the room where Mr. Slack had killed himself. Mr. Slack, did you do that? So this is the guest cottage? Yeah, this is the guest cottage. And this is where the apparition of that little girl was seen, right? Yeah, it's actually that chair there. This chair? Yeah. What Susan and I decided to do uh, was try and communicate with this girl. Stay here. Wow, you brought some really cool toys. Whoever gets these toys must be a really lucky girl. Having a little girl myself, um, you know, I, I brought toys and, and things that, that I know that my daughter would enjoy. You know, actually, so just keep going. Someone in here with us. I did, in fact, hear what sound like little footsteps. Can you tell me who you are? Why you're still here? You know, there's something that, that my little girl likes, and that's when I juggle. <clears throat> Susan and I decided, you know what, we've, we've been here long enough. We've, we've given whoever the chance to come forward. Um, let's see if she does it on her own. These toys were brought for you. We set them on this black paper where we outlined all of the toys to see if maybe they would move throughout the course of our investigation. Let's see if she decides the toys are for her and uh, see if she does, in fact, decide to play with them. All right, this is the fur loft. The story with this place was uh, somebody was in here and they saw what looked like a person in period clothing. And they were coming down the stairs and then when he turned to go look at him, he disappeared into the wall. Here at the uh, fur loft. We were going to investigation on the top floor where all the pelts are. Oh, wow. I don't like this at all. Wow, there's a lot of pelts up here. We were basically walking around. We were in there a pretty long time. And we started going back down to the lower levels. Back up again. When I came down the stairs, I thought I saw what looked like a head or a face, but it looked like it just peeked around the corner. Hello?
We don't mean you any harm. We just want to find out your identity. Yeah, that sounded like something. Scott and I both heard what sounded something vocal. Is there a child here or a female? It sounded like uh, either a girl moaning or whining. Is there somebody in pain or perhaps crying? So dark. We did look around and we didn't find anybody, uh, but we did have the TV cams running as well as the 360. So I'm pretty confident that we caught it on equipment as well. Okay, guys, let's get everything wrapped up and get out of here. We just concluded our investigation here at Lower Fort Garry. Of course, the big question is, um, is the blacksmith and his son still here? Um, is Thomas Slack uh, still here, still being haunted by his decisions that he made when he was alive? We just don't know. There seemed to be a lot of unusual things that were happening. We will really hunt through all the data that we've collected to see if we've got any results. Okay, guys, now listen to this. I've got a piece of DV footage, and this was when Scott and I were in the warehouse, mm -hmm. and uh, we were up on the third floor where Thomas Lack committed suicide, and just outside the room, we hear this big scraping sound, and it scared the crap out of us. Give it a listen. It's pretty loud, so you don't need headphones. Oh. What, what the hell was that? Was that? That loud scraping sound was in the room next to us. Well, it's cool that what you actually caught there acts up the experience that you guys had. All right, I've, I've got some DV footage, and this time it's of Chris and Barry, and they were, they're in the warehouse. Mm -hmm. Now, they're on the second floor, and they're asking uh, for some kind of response, and uh, they get a response. Listen well, to this. We need you to make a noise for us, a distinctive noise. Thanks for coming to meet us again. Thank you. You told us many stories, and all of those stories we wanted to look into. And over the course of the investigation, we had some personal experiences. Paul and Susan were investigating in the blacksmith shop. Okay. And they both heard what sounded like something being dragged across the floor. We okay. wanted to let you hear that for yourself. Wow. Now, you were able to hear that? Yes. Actually, it sounds like something might have hit the anvil, too. Mm -hmm. The next pieces we're going to show you actually happened to Barry and I. Okay. And we were in the warehouse. And we start doing some EVP questions. Okay. We need you to make a noise for us. Something that stands out. Wow. Someone knocked on something. That was clearly two in a row. Mm -hmm. That's not a creaking building sound. No. Wow. Now, we do have another piece we'd like to show you. This is actually Joe and Scott. And they were also in the warehouse on the third floor in the room where Thomas Slack supposedly mm -hmm. committed suicide. What the hell is that? It sounded like something falling down. It did. They weren't really sure where the sound was coming from. Wow, okay. But this wasn't the only place that objects were moving. Down in the guest cottage, Paul and Susan were investigating down there, and they were trying to reach this spirit of, of a child that was said to be there. So what we did, we set up some trigger objects, um, dolls and toys and things, okay. on a black piece of paper. And all of those were all marked off. Okay. Now here you can see the hair on the child. It has moved up about an inch, an inch and a half. Yep. Something unusual has happened in that the hair on the doll has moved. moved. Yeah. That's really, really interesting. This is one of those situations where we are seeing enough that's strange and, and enough that needs to be looked into more. There's definitely signs of paranormal okay. activity. That's something that we felt too, and that's exactly it and why we called you in. But we don't feel that it's going to be any way threatening no, toward the public or the it's staff. Really it has been a great pleasure to meet you, and we yes. wish you the very best. Yourself as well. Thank you so much for coming out. We Thank really you. Thank you for having us. Hope you have a good time. Thank you. Thanks.
After hearing the findings of GHI, it's actually very relieving. They're not worried about any sort of threat or any danger here, which does help with Parks Canada when we have so much staff and visitors coming through. So GHI has definitely allowed us to breathe a little easier. Carolyn seemed very happy with what we had brought her. She really did. Yeah, she seemed comforted as well. Yeah, yeah, and the visitors are coming there and they're going to be safe as well. I don't think I've ever seen so many dead animals in one place. Yeah. Maybe we were hunting dead bears. Like Could have been. I don't know how we can crack up a conversation with the dead bears. Could have brought cookies. Yeah. Or honey. Bears like honey, right? Well, there we go. And let's get the rest of the team and uh, get in the way. And welcome to British Columbia here in Canada. We have a great case coming up, I'm led to believe. Susan's going to give us the download. All right, guys, we're going to be heading over to investigate Hell's Gate Air Tram in the Fraser Canyon. Yeah, it's basically an attraction. It starts at the top of a cliff, and you take a cable car all the way to the bottom of the canyon to check out the raging whitewater rivers below. Oh, wow. Now, shortly after the Gold Rush era, Hell's Gate was the site of a construction of the Canadian Pacific Railway, where thousands of Chinese laborers were killed. They say that for every mile of track that was built, three people died. It all sounds very terrible, Susie, but what type of activity is reported there? Well, they have been experiencing several apparitions and experiencing the sounds of shouting and screaming. But the thing that people are really concerned about is the apparition of a man seen in the dining room where he's sitting down smoking a cigar. Our client's name is Brian McKinney, and he said that the activity has started to increase as they shut down for the winter. But his biggest concern is whether or not they can open the attraction back up during the spring because of all of this paranormal activity. Okay, folks, uh, you look up ahead, and um, there is Hell's Gate. So, welcome. Brian, how are you? Hey, Good to see you. nice to meet you guys. Thank you. Yeah. Hi. Brian McKinney. Welcome to Hell's Gate Air Tram. Boy, we've been looking forward to having you guys here and getting to the bottom of what's been happening at Hell's Gate over the last few years. The reason I called GHI was I've worked here for a lot of years, and uh, this place has always given me the creeps. We know that there's something here. Always having that feeling of not being alone and just not knowing if it meant harm. There's definitely more questions than answers. So we're hoping that GHI is gonna unearth the truth and shed some light on what's going on here. You know, Hell's Gate is definitely one hell of a name for location. So how, how did that come about? Well, Hell's Gate was actually given its name by the early explorer, Simon Fraser. He chronicled his journey as he made his way downstream and uh, later wrote in a journal that this was a land where no human being should ever venture, for surely we have encountered the gates of hell. In the late 1800s came uh, the beginning of transportation. Construction got underway with the Canadian Pacific. That was a time of dramatic change in the canyon again because uh, literally thousands of workers were brought in, imported, many of them from China. And it was dangerous work. Uh, many people died during the construction of that line. So what types of uh, paranormal experiences have people been having here? Things such as like product falling off walls, banging on walls, footsteps, voices. One particular story that really kind of even makes my hair stand up is a guest reported to have seen a dark shadow figure underneath the deck down here. And this dark shadow had these two fierce-looking Doberman Pinscher dogs with these deep red bloodshot eyes. Last season, a guest came and brought their dog with him that day. And when they got off the tram ride, I saw the whole thing go down. The dog was off leash and it ran directly to the spot where they described these dogs and this dark energy. And the dog literally started fighting in midair with what would appear like another animal. It was the most frightened I've ever seen a dog in my entire life. So here we are at the lower terminal in the uh, in the dining room area, and there's somebody here that I'd like you to meet. This is Heather. Hi. Heather, how are you? I'm Barry. And Heather has uh, had some very interesting experiences down here with us. 
We've been researching this property for the past four years, and it is by far the most intense place we've ever visited. In this room alone, we have had guests talk about things playing with her hair. And some people have seen a smoking man sitting in the corner here smoking a cigar. In the restaurant, we used to always get comments from people. They would complain to whoever was serving them, like, I can smell cigar smoke. And we'd always check around, and nothing was ever at the end of it. So, hey guys, I'd like to introduce you to uh, Ken Green. He's our uh, operations manager, and uh, he's the skeptic of the group. So, Ken, what type of activity actually happened personally to you? One of the things that's happened to me is while I was down here at night, I was down here sanding on a board, and I when I hear this, and naturally I think there's somebody here. So I go out back and I look around, and there was nobody else on the property. There was just nobody here. Well, thank you very much, Brian. We'll get a look into some of those stories that you've told us about tonight. Maybe get you some answers. We've just finished our tour um, of Hell's Gate Air Tram. A lot of the different phenomenon that has been reported to us is very, very interesting. A lot of big questions, and they seem to be connected with the history of the place. Okay, I'm at the camera, Paul. So we have to get to the bottom of this, find out if it's going to be dangerous for anyone visiting in the next season. Now, let's get those lights out and start investigating, okay? Three main claims. The guy, the smoking guy. Yeah. The smell of cigar smoke, and then the women who claim to have their hair pulled. When Barry and I came in here, we figured the best thing to do was to sit down at a table because from what we were told, people would be in here and they'd be having their lunch, and they'd look over to find this man sitting at the table in the corner of the room. Sir, do you know that it's illegal to smoke inside a building now? How long have you been coming here? Did you oversee workers building the railway in this area? I thought I just saw something moved. What? By that pole there? What the hell was that? I thought I just saw something moved. By that pole there? What the hell was that? Chris and I were investigating the dining room at Hell's Gate Air Tram. This is the area where a gentleman has been seen um, smoking a cigar. I can see the, the DVR camera just about... But it, it was more defined than that. It was wider. Yeah. It was taller than the DVR camera. Okay. So it would have been about the height of a person. I went behind the pole. If you just walk through the room, can you do that for us again? There's no reason for you to be afraid of us. This is the workshop. Now in here, they said that a guy was working in his workshop, and then he, he heard what sounded like a couple of bang, bang, bang. He says he likened it to, to wood banging. Get this equipment. That's a pretty big workshop. It is big. Is anyone in here with us? Hello? Okay, who's down here? My name is Joe, it's my friend Scott. Hello? Oh, that's weird. That's <laughs> a little On the strange. <laughs> wow. If you do not want us here, let us know. If you want to give us a message, let us know. Don't you have anything to say? Something just touched the back of my pant leg, but I don't know. Oh, 
Oh, wait a minute, Joe, come over here. Oh. You smell something? Does this smell like cigar? I, I got a, uh, a smell of what, what can only be described as like a, a cigar smell or a, a strong smoke smell. It, it just passed right by me and then it, di it disappeared pretty quickly. Is there anyone here with us? A cigarette and a lighter. Susan and I started to investigate the dining area. We were obviously looking for this smoking man. Who was he? Why is he here? Um, we were using a trigger object. So we basically placed a, a lighter and a cigarette on a table. Now, if they move, we've got it on tape. Now, feel free, whoever's in here, feel free to help yourself to a cigarette. Maybe you like to smoke after a long day working on the railroad. Why don't you give us a clue as to who you are and why you're here? Shows? Yeah? Cigarettes moved. Yeah. uh Yep, cigarettes moved. It was about an inch, maybe an inch and a half apart when I set them up. Yeah, that is weird. In fact, let moved down as well, because I think I had it like that. No way. Yeah, look, that's how it was. Maybe a little bit. We had a camera on that, so I cannot wait to get back to analysis to see what happened to that cigarette and why the hell did it move. So, Brian is saying the guy was standing like right about here, right, with the dogs? Holding the two dogs, yeah. Ooh. Chris and I want to investigate the area where this uh, apparition of a man with two dogs have been seen. I think he's seen through here as well. He's appeared on ground level, which indicates that this guy may be more associated with the real whip. Can you tell us the names of your dogs? Were you here during the gold rush times? Did you come here for work? Were you the company man? Did you make the rest toe the line? Did you push workers so hard that they died while building the railway? Not if a man with dogs hasn't got the balls to show himself for them there's not much more we can do about us no okay folks um, we've had a great night's investigation um let's uh, get everything wrapped up and get ready to go we just finished our investigation here at hell's gate air tram it seems to have been an interesting night the big questions um are any of the entities here really damaging to the, the people who work here and of course the visitors coming next year. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see what comes out of analysis. What about personal experiences? Did anybody have any? I had a couple. Um, uh, Scott and I were investigating the workshop, and uh, I was facing the wall with all the tools on it, and I felt as though as somebody brushed by me, and it moved my wallet. So I, I looked, and when I did that, Scotty leaned over from where he was, and, and when he leaned over, he could smell what smelled like cigars. So it passed in front of me, and then it, it disappeared mm -hmm. within like a minute. I couldn't smell it again. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, now, that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. However, mm -hmm. I want you guys to look at this. Susan and I were uh, investigating in the dining area mm -hmm. using a trigger object. We used a cigarette and a lighter. We right. placed it on the table. We okay. had a camera on it. Okay. Okay. All right. Whoa! Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. Uh -huh. Really glad you guys came. Oh, thank you very much, Brian. Um, it was a, it was a great time for us. There was a lot of stories that you were that you were telling us that people were experiencing, and we really went out of our way to try and find out 
what's going on and is it going to be potentially dangerous to people coming in the new season uh, so those were the big questions that we wanted answered coming into this but of course like like most times we do experience some really unusual things and we call these personal experiences for example Chris and I were investigating in here, and just over to the left, this dark shadow moved from left, moving across to the right, and disappeared behind one of the posts. We had cameras pointed in that direction, but it wasn't able to capture any of the activity. So for that, we just have to put it down as a personal experience. Okay. Now, a few of our other teammates had some experiences as well. Joe and Scott were actually investigating in the warehouse, and Joe described feeling something brushed by the back of him. And just as that happened, Scott started to smell cigar smoke, which is weird because it's in a different area than where you guys told us you were smelling mm -hmm. it up here in the restaurant. Mm -hmm. And they end up having another experience later, and they were looking out the window when they saw this white figure of mist walk by and just completely disappear. They did take off after it, and they said they didn't see any signs of anybody out there. There were no other team members outside, so at this point, it's unexplainable. Okay. Now, within this room, the restaurant, Paul and Susan had a cigarette and, and a lighter, and they used these as trigger objects. We use particular objects. Sometimes we get spirit manipulation of these objects. Okay. So Susie and Paul came in, and they put the lighter down on the table, they put the cigarette down on the table, and we're going to show you a clip of what happened while they were investigating. Okay. You're, you're kidding. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, as if someone's rolling it, you know? It's one thing to go one way, but for it to go back? Yes. Uh -huh. So uh, that one caught us. So is there any danger here? Do our guests or our staff have anything to fear? If there is something here, none of us felt threatened. Honestly, I wouldn't worry about it. I think that all your staff here is safe. I think any guests that you have here when you guys open up in the spring are going to be safe. Yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty cool. And uh, we really wish you the very best in su of success. Well, it's been a great pleasure. Thank, Thank you. you. We Thank really you enjoyed it. Thank, Thank you. you. We're happy about the fact that, um, you know, there's no evil entity here. It's going to be full steam ahead, and uh, we're looking forward to opening the doors for another year. Brian took the news very well. He did. And, uh, you know, I, I believe we've answered the question for him. Is, was there any danger to him or the staff or anyone going yeah. to the place? No. Definitely not. There's not. What was moving the cigarette is open to debate. Yes. And further investigation, I'm sure, I, for one, will not be down that cable car again. Uh, so, uh, uh. but... Uh, <laughs>